In this video, I will show you how I painted this Chihuahua portrait in acrylics. So I started painting my background black, which I now think that it got a bit too dark. But that's what I did, and I also have a little bit of red mixed in with my black. And I dried that with my hair dryer. And I just painted in some loose branches and green stuff in the back there. Nothing detailed as I want my focus to be on the chihuahua and not the background. For the moss, I used a very damaged bristle brush and by damaged I mean really frayed so I get lots of little dots when dabbing it lightly. And I dab in different directions to create the texture of the moss, get some variation in there. And when creating foliage, bushes, trees, grass, and things like that, ideally you want at least three different colors of, in this case, green, one dark, one medium, and one for highlights. Of course you can have more, but you need at least three to make it look somewhat realistic. I try to get more detail in there, so I put another layer of white dots, which I glazed green later. I wasn't quite happy with it, so I went back and forth on it quite a bit. Just keep layering until you're happy. As usual, I like to start with the eyes on my portraits as they help me judge my values moving forward. If I don't, I will most likely not go dark enough on my shadows and not realize that until I paint the eyes in and then I have to go over everything again and darken it up. So why not just start with the eyes so I don't have to do that? Also, the eyes are always the easiest and fastest part to get looking good on the whole portrait, so they're really nice to start with. So I just blocked it in, starting with black, then painting in some light blue reflections and some brown. You want the eye lighter at the bottom and darkest at the top with the reflections. And I like to make eye reflections more blue around the edges almost like they're reflecting blue sky outside, I think it makes them look more alive and realistic. Blocking in the nose with some grayish blue and purple. Focus on the lights and darks. If you get a highlight in the wrong place, it can really skew the nose and make it look deformed. We don't want that. All the white lines you see were done with transfer paper. I have my drawing on a separate piece of paper which I transferred onto the canvas using transfer paper. I went a bit overboard with the lines, I didn't need that many, but they helped me see the direction and length of the fur. Moving on to the muzzle. When painting fur, whichever color, it's really nice to have a dark base. Obviously not black for a white animal, but much darker than for itself. Then you can paint in the individual strands really easily, however elaborate you want to go, and layer more on top of that, and that will give you a really nice, defined, realistic fur. Now 
So I'm just layering more and more fur. I want her nose and mouth to look like it's coming forward. And it's really only the face that I want to focus the most on. You don't need to be this elaborate with all of the fur. Unless you want to. You can't really see that many strands in the black fur. And the rest is really just the same process. Pay attention to the length and direction of the strands around the eyes and face. How the strands shape around the body creates the shape and anatomy of the animal. We want it to curve around the eyes and head rather than laying just flat. And like I said, it's really just the face that needs this many details. So when you got the texture of the fur down and it's dry, you can glaze the different colors over it. That is very watered down paint, so it becomes very transparent and you can see the previous layers underneath it. So it's very easy to change the color of the fur and get lots of variation in there. So where the light fur is transitioning into the black fur, you want to paint the light hairs over the black and I'm using purple and blue as a nice transition color. Lots of little hairs and I'm using a liner brush for this. And I'm switching to a bigger filbert brush now to soften things out. Right now it looks a little wiry, so I'm going over it with a bigger, softer lines, still transparent enough for the previous hairs to show through. It's many, many layers of transparent paint and it's really only the light fur areas that get this much attention. The black fur is done really, really fast. So for the black fur, since I already have an almost black base, all I need to focus on are some purple or blue highlights. When painting black animals or hair, avoid gray for highlights as that can age or make it look dull and dusty. So instead of gray, use purples and blues for highlights.
blocking in the legs and paws. The whole time I'm paying, paying attention to the direction of the fur, you might feel like painting the fur facing straight down the leg, but it's actually curved towards the back. And I'm building from darker layers to lighter and lighter. And whenever I feel like it's looking too harsh and wiry, I switch to a bigger brush and soften it out. And see how I got both blue and purple for the highlights on her back? It makes it look really shimmery and shiny. Again, building the paw from darker to lighter, adding strands with the liner and softening them out with a bigger brush. Where I want softer looking fur, you're going to have less individual strands showing, so I'm using a bigger brush for that.
Again, I'm using light blue on her head here, curving my strokes around her head. And here she is finished! Like I said earlier, I think I made the background a bit too dark, but oh well. <laughs> 